Boom. Yay. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Rock Fantasy Files on the Rock Fantasy YouTube channel. Tonight, we delve into two al albums celebrating 40th anniversaries in 2023. Two debut albums that form thrash metal history with Metallica Kill 'Em All, which was released on July 25th, 1983, going against Slayer's Show No Mercy. That was released in the month of December of 1983. I didn't have the exact date. I couldn't find that today. I've asked tonight's guests to tell us what they like about each album. And if they only had money to buy one of these records and they were going into the record store, be it today, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, but it's today, what album would they bring home with them? And uh, tonight's guest we've got in here, we got Ed Farsley for Armageddon Productions. We've got Tony Dio, one of our regulars on the channel. We got Ovi from Norway here, staying up all night to hang out with us. We got Count Ralphus in my, center, as fuck. in my center square. And of course, we got John McAtee from the Mighty Incantation, of course, always on. Sure. And welcome back to the channel, Steve Levin. Hasn't been on in quite a while. It's good to have him back. We're expecting a couple other friends to pop in tonight. Uh, Danny Barth and uh, maybe a couple other surprises, but I think we'll get this kicked off. What we're going to do is just uh, tell us what, you know, you guys going to pick what up, but talk about each album a little bit and why you decided to pick the one or the other and what <clears throat> your favorite tracks are from each one. So why don't we kick it off with, uh, has anybody here actually got to hop off? They got to do something else. Does anybody want to go first or any, any preference? All good. All right, so I'm going to go with uh, the person that's in my upper upper right, upper left square, Ed Farsley. Welcome to the show, and pick your album. How are you doing? Um, first off, I mean, th these are two albums that created the genre that we're all a big part of. Um, two defining albums, two classic albums, two phenomenal albums. Um, Hit the Lights, um, Show No Mercy, just created everything, were the first bands to really get kick things off for the underground, and to this day, two of the biggest bands of all time. Um, let's see here. Uh, for me, basically, um, of course, uh, I bought a lot of compilation albums back in the day, so Metal Massacre albums were always pick those up. Um, so I heard Hit the Lights and Aggressive Perfector before the albums came you know, before the debut albums came out. So I was familiar with the bands. So when the albums came out, um, I heard about them, didn't wasn't able to pick them up right away because I was like 14 years old, uh, 13 years old or something. Yeah, uh, 83, 14 years old. Uh, so I had to wait to get to the record store. Um, first time I bought them was at Rock and Roll Heaven in Clark, New Jersey. Uh, first trip out there, um, 84, Probably spring of 84, uh, finally convinced my mom to drive me out there because mm -hmm. I've been hearing the commercials on the radio and I wanted to check out this new record store, this new type of music. First records I bought, Kill Em All and Show No Mercy, uh, along with Black Metal, uh, Heavy Metal Maniac and Ace of Spades. So that was just a hell of a hell of a start <laughs> for me. Um, I'm picking both those albums up and just falling in love with them. Um, listen to them millions and millions of times wore out the vinyl wore out the the record the the lyric sheet everything uh uh for me between the two albums shona mercy has a slight edge um kill em all is phenomenal every song is great um but shona mercy is just perfect in every way and just really defines what i what i got into um for kill em all top five songs uh four horsemen uh, I love the mechanic too. Uh, the original version and the Megadeth version, probably like that more. But the Four Horsemen has always got a great groove to it, just a heavy song. Um, Anesthesia Pulling Teeth, just phenomenal. Hadn't heard anything like that at the time. Uh, bass solo, who the hell ever listened to the bass? Mm. Um, but uh, just a killer bass solo, just a great song. Two, two songs. Uh, Metal Militia, great way to end the album. Just a brutal, sure. just a heavy metal classic song uh, all about us. Uh, no Remorse, Brutally Heavy, and favorite song of the album, Phantomoid. Just mm. a phenomenal, perfect song. I don't think um, the vocals have ever sounded better on any Metallica song. Uh, killer solos, heavy riffs, just great song. Perfect in every way. Uh, Show No Mercy, like I said, just 
fantastic album. For me, Hell Awaits has always been my favorite Slayer album. Um, but Show No Mercy is just an absolutely perfect album. Phenomenal. Uh, top five songs, Fight Till Death, just a great, great, great song. Uh, Tormentor, always, always love Tormentor, just a brutal song. Uh, Show No Mercy, again, great way to end the album. Evil Has No Boundaries, just a phenomenal way to start off. Just insane riffing, just fiercely intense from the opening notes of the song, just kicking the album off. You knew what you were getting in store for. It. And favorite song, one of my all-time favorite songs from Slayer, The Antichrist. Just always loved it, always will. Um, thankfully, like I said, the first time I got these albums, I was able to buy both of them at the same time. Um, if I had to buy just one, show no mercy. But Kill Em All is a very, very close second. And there you have it. Cool, cool, cool. Now, now, Danny needs a passcode to get in. So, somebody can somebody text <laughs> it over to him. <laughs> I just got a text. Uh, so, we got one vote. Yeah, I'll Slayer. take care of Danny. All right, thanks, thanks. Yeah. And uh, we got one vote for Slayer. My next guest tonight, all the way from North Carolina. Well, there's two people from North Carolina, so it's misleading. But we're gonna go with Mr. <laughs> Tony, Tony with Mr. Tony Dio first. The name North, Ca North Carolina is like the new home of metal. <laughs> It is. I'm going to have to move down there and retire. <laughs> man. I want to come down and uh, buy a campground. We could do metal shows there. What do you think? Hell yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> I have to do that in a few Go years. Go tubing too. Yeah. yeah. The whole thing. <laughs> Mini golf, arcade. But anyhow, we're off subject now. Yeah, man. Um, you know, so I kind of got into the more extreme stuff. It was a little bit later. Uh, I didn't really, I used to see the ads and hit parader for you know, for Metal Blade and Megaforce stuff and all, you know, and I was kind of infatuated with it. And I'd see some of the stuff in the store sometimes, but we kind of bypassed it. And Metallica was definitely the band that really introduced me to a lot of it because uh, I remember this kid coming to school with Ride the Lightning uh, in uh, 85, and that was the beginning of it there for me. So, you know, it kind of got that. And then, uh, of course, I went back and got Kill Em All. And I was thinking today, I said, I probably bought Kill Em All in different formats, probably at least six times. I know I've had several different CD versions and they got that box set that came out a few years ago and so forth. And, uh, but, um, but yeah, so that was the first one that I got would, would be the Kill Em All from Metallica and Slayer. I mean, I didn't get into, when I got into Slayer, uh, it was uh, Rain and Blood was out and that was the first thing that I got by them. And then um, I think uh, I don't think I even went back to any of the earlier stuff. I ended up getting South of Heaven next. And that's when I really went back and started getting the earlier stuff. South of Heaven still my favorite Slayer record. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that um, for Show to Mercy it was a lot more straightforward, heavy metal influenced album from Slayer compared to anything else they've done. They got heavier on Hell Waits, more thrashier. Or and the first album's a little more just straight, it's straight kind of a traditional uh, heavy metal mix with like speed metal, and uh, so it's just great, some great songs on there. Um, I re I really like. I think my favorites ones are Evil Has No Boundaries for sure and Antichrist. Uh, I love um, uh, Black Magic and Tormentor might be my favorite song on the album. Uh, I first. Uh, uh, when I was listening to this album, I remember just, like I said, the, the songs, they were more catchy and like they had more of that traditional heavy metal, like almost uh Judas priest influence, maybe in a way uh, just faster. And I know Kerry King is a huge Judas priest fan. So, you know, a lot of those, those riffs, I'm sure he kind of got the ideas from um, when you're talking about Metallica, kill them all. Um, my favorite ones on there would be, uh, probably my favorite song I hear by them is one of my favorite Metallic songs is Phantom Lord. And uh, I love No Remorse, uh, Four Horsemen, uh, Motor Breath, and uh, like Ed said, uh, Anesthesia, Pulling Teeth. I, I was, uh, I was had a bass and trying to play bass around that time and stuff and just thinking you could get a wah pedal and some distortion and come up with that. I mean, it just sounds like nothing else you've ever heard before. Um Ed mentioned getting his record from uh, from Rock Roll Heaven. I actually bought this one from a friend of mine. From it was his, out of his collection. He's from New York. He bought this particular pressing here at Rock Roll Heaven back in the day. He used to go there all the time, and so this is actually an original from there. Nice. Um, but yeah, um, 
if I came down to it and I had to pick one, it's really tough because I have really grown to, to really like uh, Show No Mercy a whole lot over the years. I might even go as far as say it might be my second favorite Slayer record next to South of Heaven. So uh, it's it's a tough call, but I probably got to go with Metallica just because I've probably played the Metallica more. Uh, and if I had went in the store, I probably would have bought the Metallica because I probably had knew the name more than I would have known Slayer at the time if it was just something I stumbled upon, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I did want to say that one of my favorite songs, like I said, that's on there, uh, Tormentor, was, uh, you know, was featured in River's Edge, if you guys remember that, too. They had a couple <laughs> of Slayer tracks on. They had... Uh, they also put Captor Sin that was on the um, Haunting the Chapel EP. So they had two songs in that movie. Wow. I forgot about that. Yeah. And how was he? Yeah. yeah. River's Edge. When did that movie come out? 1987. Okay. I have it to, had a pretty, I, pretty, pretty metal the soundtrack. They had, had a bunch of metal blade bands. They had Fate Swarming was on it. And Hallows Eve. A few others. Hallows Eve, yeah. Yeah. Hallows Eve was on it. Yeah. Then they had like a, like a reggae song, I think at the end it's kind of <laughs> funny. <laughs> well, anyhow, we, we're tied up here one to one, and we're gonna go all the way and zoom across the sea to Norway to Mr. Ove. Good evening, oh. sir. Good morning, whatever time it is. It's good morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what time uh, is it? Man? It's uh, three thirty. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's still early. It's early. <laughs> Have another beer. <laughs> it's either time to yep. go to bed soon or time to get up, right? <laughs> oh, I'm going to bed earlier, so I'm like, I slept before. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, um, when it comes to these two albums, it's Slayer. I, I'm i probably the youngest here, so I came into Slayer during Divine Intervention. And Divine Intervention, for me, is still my favorite Slayer album because of sentimental reasons and it's because it's it's just the opening drum solo on Killing Fields or a drum track, I should say. And yeah. And then I got into, I went backwards and backwards and I came to Show No Mercy uh, a few months later, I guess, or a year later or something. It was I couldn't get albums every week since I was only like, 13 or 14, so mm -hmm. had to work for the record, man. <laughs> sure. And as for songs, uh, my favorite top three songs for Show No Mercy, my favorite song there is Metal Storm, Face the Slayer. Mm. I really like that track. And then for number two, I have Show No Mercy title track, and number three, Evil Have No Boundaries, Kerry King. And for Metallica, Metallica I came in around, I should say, live shit. So I got that live shit box set with the VHS cassettes mm -hmm. and the triple CD and the scary guy cut out. Yeah, and... yeah. <laughs> That's where I came in there. And of course, this was in 93, 94. So Enter Sadman and, and those music videos were still going on in on Norwegian music TV and stuff. So that's how I came in. And it Kill Them All was probably after... Master Puppets, After I Lightning, then I bought Kill em All at the end. And as for songs, my favorite songs on, on Kill em All, my number one is Metal Militia. I really like that track. It's probably, for me, it's the most aggressive song on the, tra on the album. And for number two, I got Phantom Lord. And number three is Jump in the Fire. All yeah. Damus Dane songs, except I guess Phantom Lord is it a Hetfield title at least on that. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um as for choosing albums, uh drum wise, it's Show No Mercy. Easy. Um but I'm I'm a lifetime Megadeth fan, so Damus Dane has put his print on an album, so I have to go with Kill 'em All. All right. If I would go back 20 years or 25 years, I would have bought Show No Mercy because then it was all about the artwork. You bought the album after artwork mm. and Kill Em All doesn't really have... I guess if Metallica had gotten the metal of your... And then I would have gotten that one. But since, <laughs> they, since the record label did... Yeah. 
I don't know, make it less metal, I guess. All right. So a vote yeah, for so a vote for Metallica from Norway. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So I'm gonna to go to my center square tonight, Mr. Count Ralphus, our local heavy metal historian, who is soon going to be celebrating his birthday here in Middletown, New York at Quinspins, our new venue with uh his birthday show, which features a band called Show No Mercy, who are the Slayer tribute, along with Jottenheim from New York City, Reaper, and Crucial Pain. So anybody that's in the area, please come on out on February 11th. And uh, we have some more shows we'll, lined up there. We'll talk about at the end of the program, too. We have a big show there this Saturday, if anybody's in the area, too, with six, now six bands playing Will from the Croptics birthday party. So going to be a good time next couple of weeks. But, Ralph, kick it off, and uh, let's see what you've got to say about these two great records. All right. Like everybody's saying, groundbreaking records, so important. There's not a bad song on either album. There's no wrong choices. You can go with any songs, and, and you got – they're just all classic. Um, I had recently been reading uh, an article f about uh, Kerry King talking about how Metallica – was a good 16 months ahead of Slayer as far as like Slayer was still doing uh, cover songs and Metallica when Dave Mustaine was in the band, they had all originals and they were recording them and stuff. So it's kind of odd that the albums came out at the same time, basically because uh, Metallica was so far ahead of them, but it, that's how it was back then getting signed. It took a long time, but I'll go with um, first. I'll talk about uh, Metallica, kill them all. Uh, I had, a couple of friends, uh, they were brothers, and they used to steal like every cassette that came out from the stores, <laughs> like Record World and stuff. And my store the, too. You know, <laughs> it was before Rock Fantasy. So these guys, they just had everything, and, and it was great because I would just buy blank tapes and I would tape all the shit. So you know, later on, I would buy them when I could, but uh, I had no money when I was thirteen, fourteen, and these guys. Uh, they used to make compilation tapes when we used to hang out. And the first time I heard Metallica, I heard Seek and Destroy and Jump in the Fire. And they were real catchy, probably the two catchiest songs on the album. So I instantly liked them. And uh, then when I got the album, I, I really fell in love with everything on there. Uh, my my three, I, I picked three songs from each album, but uh, I went with Whiplash number three. This such a headbanging song, just like the whole album. It, for both albums, there's this great headbanging music. I went number two, The Four Horsemen, and number one, Phantom Lord. And then uh, switching over to Slayer, uh, Slayer, they were a lot dirtier and uglier and scarier, like, you know, the, the Satan on the cover and stuff. So I definitely had Metallica first. It was a little bit more something I could get into. I was still going to religious instruction once a week and stuff. Uh -oh. you know? But then um, when I, I got to see this, uh, the ultimate revenge on VHS, and that opened the door to me for Exodus and Venom and Slayer. And they play a bunch of the songs from show no mercy on this. And uh, that's when I got hooked. And once I got hooked on Slayer, everything like kind of changed. Then it was like, like I, I didn't, there was nothing that I was going to be afraid of anymore. Like, and uh, it opened the door to all the more evil stuff. And that's the one thing that I think Slayer has the advantage on on Slayer. I mean, on Metallica is I, they, they have the way more evil vibe and lyrics to them. And it was just scarier. And uh, I mean, music wise for both albums, I, I love Kirk Hammett's leads on Kill Em All. They just really stand out. Every song when I was re-listening to these albums, I just kept going, man, every lead is is unbelievable. James's rhythm is uh, rhythm guitar is unbelievable. And I even love Lars's drums on, on Kill Em All. I, I think they're great. Uh, everybody gives him a lot of shit. I guess because he's always getting compared to so many other great drummers, but I think he's amazing on it. And of course, Cliff Burton on bass, you can't compare, but uh, Slayer's like songs are, were more vicious and more evil. And uh, so for number three, I'm going to go with Die by the Sword. Number two, Evil Has No Boundaries. And number one, Antichrist. And uh, if I can only buy one, I'd have to go with Slayer. I mean, they're so close. Metallica is a little bit more groundbreaking for me because that really 
got me into the underground music. But once I found uh, Slayer, and it's funny how I ended up getting Slayer, is one of my friends got it. Uh, he, he got Show No Mercy, and he had a couple other albums, and his mom found them, and she freaked out and told him mm. to get rid of them. So he, he lived a few doors down. He just showed up in my house with it. So I didn't even have to go out and buy it. It just, like, came over. He's like, my mom's going to break these if I don't get rid of them. So here you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I ended up, you know, it's still in my collection all these years later over there. I got the three uh, Show No Mercy Minotaur Slayer figures there. Yeah, yeah. I got the fifth one up there. I got the uh, vintage Show No Mercy shirt up here. But uh, yeah, if I can only pick one, it has to be Slayer. And uh, yeah, that's it, you know. Yeah, I wasn't know I, I I wasn't knowing which which way you were going to lean, Ralph, because we were talking about it last week, and you were kind of pulling from Metallica, and we were talking in the shop a little bit about it. It's just so close, really. It I mean, is. It is. It's, yeah. There's not, you, there's not one bad song on each album. I listened to them both multiple times this week, and like mm -hmm. if I was going to rate it, I had Metallica as nine point nine, and then Slayer as a ten, and that's how close it is to me. I mean. But uh, Metallica is, is more groundbreaking, I think, as mm. far as how it just introduced everybody to this new, raw, brutal music. I mean, you had Motorhead, you had other things before, but Metallica is the one that I think most people latched onto, and that, that just opened the doors for everything. Yeah, yeah but they're still doing some, a couple of those songs in football stadiums in 2023, which is amazing. Right? Yeah, Metallica got five hundred dollars. You got five hundred dollars. You can go check it out. Yeah, <laughs> good. I guess. I mean, the whole I, I show, Metallica I, I got on big tours, and they they go out with Ozzy, and then they get on stuff like Day on Day on the Green out in and yeah, in California. they got in front of the mainstream rock audiences mm -hmm. that the other bands didn't do at that time or couldn't yeah. do at that time. But it, it was just uh, inevitable that they would eventually break and be a, a, a huge band. I feel like, you know, mm -hmm. and if you think about how heavy kill them all is, just think about your friends when you played it four years ago and they go, what are you listening to? That's, that sounds like a bunch of noise. And these same people love those songs now. Yes. Like, yes. Like the fans and they love those songs. This was a show that I went to, and uh, it's a bootleg album, but uh, they opened up for Ozzy, like he was saying, uh, opening up for some mainstream yeah. bands, and seeing them open up for Ozzy, and I was only like 16 at the time, and uh, a couple months earlier, we went to the Black Sabbath, Wasp, and Anthrax show at the Meadowlands, and my friends that went in a different car, they found the tour buses, and they got to meet Anthrax, and they came to school the next day going, ah, we met Anthrax, and we were like, hmm. holy shit, like, how amazing was that? So then a couple months later, we go to the Metallica show and they go, yeah, this tour bus will be right over here. We went over there after the show. And sure enough, there were the tour buses. And I always regret that I didn't go over to Ozzy's tour bus, but uh, I don't know if he even came out. But the guys from Metallica, after about a half an hour, there's about 15 kids out there. They came out and they signed everybody's autographs. And uh, too bad we didn't have cameras back then. Yeah. But, uh, I had a set of spikes that I, I was wearing and uh, I had every member sign it and then I lost the spikes like two years later I was playing basketball I put the spikes down to play basketball <laughs> and, then, and then I left them at the park and I went home and I remembered I drove back to the park they were gone so somebody uh, in my town has a, a set of spikes with all these scribbles on it and they have no idea who was actually <laughs> signed <laughs> that shit but I, I did uh keep my ticket stub i got my ticket stub fully signed nice got all four members put it in a little frame and uh and that, like as a, as a kid that was the first band that i ever got to like meet so it, they were like the, the whole world to me at the time you yeah know? and the great memories and uh you know they got cliff did you talk, did you talk with cliff huh did you talk with cliff yeah i mean he barely said anything. Like we were all like gushing over them, and he was just like cool, cool. He was like smoking, and they were all drinking beers while we were waiting for him. I remember the, in the tour bus, we were like trying to get on each other's shoulders, looking into the tour bus, and they were watching. <laughs> they were watching the footage of the show they just played earlier that night, like on on videotape. Somebody had taped it, and I seen clips of that. That I think, yeah, there's clips of I, the whole show might be on the Master of Puppets box set, but um. Yeah, we could see him as soon as it was over. Then they came out and they started hanging out with everybody. But Lars was talking. The, he was the most talkative. He, oh. he was like really engaging with everybody. And like, 
you know, when he had, was signing my spikes, he was like, this is the most metal thing to sign. And he was like fucking showing me. <laughs> he was really, really friendly. And it was a great experience. On, a, on that same tour, I went to Glens Falls Civic Center. Uh, I think I went to the Metal Ant show too, but in Glens Falls, I forget who I was with because my memory's hazy from back then, but Cliff Burton was walking around the back of the Civic Center and the uh, rest of the band was there too, but Cliff was the one that walked up to us and he signed my battle vest at the time and uh, he was really cool to meet and talk with him. Of course, we did brush shoulders with them in 1983 and Middletown, New York, too, a little bit, but uh, that's I'll, I'll continue that story when my turn comes up later. So anything else you want to add, Ralph, before we move along? You know, that Middletown show that you're going to talk about, that's uh, in the box set, the DVD. Yes. Of, and I got a bootleg album of that, and uh, we've talked about it once before, but uh, mm. the album has the whole full audio, but then on the, the DVD, the audio cuts out, and they, they let the whole video play, but there's no sound. I don't understand why they couldn't take the, the bootleg album and, and mix mm, it in. Mix it up, yeah. But it's still great footage. And, and Steve Levin, I guess, is front row in that show. And when I watch it, I try to I try to spot him, but I don't see him in there. <laughs> wow, yeah, yeah. yeah. A few of us were there that night. The Dukester was there, and a few of the other guys from Middletown were all there that night. But uh, all righty. So uh, I guess we're going to move over to Mr. John McAtee. It's always a pleasure to have him on the Rock Fancy Channel, our true, genuine rock stars here. <laughs> <laughs> now he's never coming on again. Uh, I'm out of here. Um, no. um, okay. Death what, metal um, wizard. Yeah. So it's a tough one with these two albums, really, um, especially because like we've been talking about the impact that they both made was pretty impressive at that time. I mean, it's kind of weird to try to explain that to people now, especially with like how freaking wimpy Metallica is now, you know, and how, you know, Slayer, you know, kind of turned into what they turned into and stuff. Um, but there was a time when both bands were like, so forward thinking and and just pushing metal to a new extreme so i mean and and i and i really love both albums um yeah it's just a tough it was it's really a tough decision to make um i know i got into metallica first the first thing i bought by them was the jump in the fire ep and um i just was blown away by it when i heard it it was it just it was weird but it just sounded so metallic like it just it had like this jump out of the guitars and just a vibe that was just um you know kicked my ass pretty much and um slayer took me a little longer to get into because it was like a process um at first i thought they were too rough when i first heard them but after a little while i really started to understand it it's, and that's one of those bands at that time i think is like once you got it you got it and you were like possessed by it so you know it's, it's really a both of both are just super important but if i had to pick hmm, man it's tough i feel i feel like a retard saying this because of uh, the perception of both bands now but i have to go I would kill them all over um, Show No Mercy, even though Show No Mercy is an amazing album. Um, kill them all, just there's just an attack on those guitars that is just unmatched at that time. Hearing that, I mean, I heard nothing like basically any of those songs on that album were just like that was my almost my first time hearing something like that, you know, and I was into metal already. And, stuff but that was just beyond so i go i have to go kill them all even though um you know man show no mercy is just so good so good to <laughs> flip a coin flip a coin john <laughs> but no i'm going i'm going with kill them all um i to this day i still believe that the best best metallica songs you know written by dave mustaine if dave mustaine right i mean 
writes the worst songs for his own band. <laughs> <laughs> at least in my opinion you know i mean, I I mean well i think i think i think Dave Mustaine's biggest problem is that he tries to sing and that just throws it right out the window there's no hope i mean he did good on um killing is my business i think but after that it started to get whinier and whinier and, it, and now it's just like please it just sounds like a little chipmunk or something squeaking oh. live you know, it's pretty, pretty well, bad. <laughs> it's just gonna, the truth. You're not getting but, any backstage passes from Mustaine after this no. episode. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I love his guitar playing, though. It is he is a great guitar player. But uh, I just not, I just not a Megadeth fan. Um, mm -hmm. But um, <clears throat> the stuff he wrote for Metallica was great. I mean, I, I wish that he would just continue to write Metallica songs for them and be like a ghostwriter <laughs> for Metallica, and that, that would Good be. Point. He probably he'd probably make more money doing that than doing Megadeth, you know, because Metallica these days really needs the songs, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they they're really they they just don't have that fire anymore. But anyway, enough of me bashing all the biggest <laughs> bands in metal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, as far um, um yeah, I mean, was, I mean, like I said, it's a tough call, but I have to go with uh, Metallica. Um, kill them all it's it just a, it's just a better um no nah, it's not a better album it just hit me be more at that time and if, if it's slayer it's like i love showing on mercy and it's a great album I mean, the songs are amazing oh i guess both metallica and um even though they're both great albums they're not my favorite of either band either i, I think mm. I, I think ride the lightning is my favorite metallica album yes and yes. I think uh, Slayer, it's it's probably Hello Waits. I mean, it's Slayer's a weird thing because Hello Waits was such a great album, but then uh, um, Rain and Blood was a different sounding album, but still the same, but substantially different. So almost you could almost have two favorite Slayer albums, and they're kind of different enough, but they're also the same. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain it. I guess if you know, you know, but if you don't, you know, because mm -hmm. I like the rawness of of Hello Waits, in my opinion. I think yeah. it's, I think it's, I mean, those, those songs are, are genius, you know. Um, but anyway, um, as far as my picks for, we'll go with Show No Mercy. I mean, it's difficult. I, I love every song in this album. Um, yeah, I think Face the Slayer is a good one on that. I'll pick that one. My probably, yeah, Annie Christ is really one of the best songs, really one of their best songs. Um, uh, Annie yeah. Christ. Um, and I like all of them, you know. Um, yeah, Show No Mercy is great. It's it's a tough one, it's really the whole album is great, but that's the same problem I'm gonna have with um, uh, Kill Em All because. Kill them all, really. I mean, besides Seek and Destroy, which I'm, it's just so burnt out on, and they 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 butchered live almost every time <laughs> I've seen them. Um, but I, really, every song on that album is great. I mean, Jump Into Fire is like the first Metallica song I learned how to play, so it always holds a close place in my heart. And I just love everything on it. I mean, I think Side Two might be better though. Phantom Lord, No Remorse, the Metal Militia. I mean, all those songs are killer. And I, I just watched that video of uh, Dave Mustaine playing um, Metal Militia with Metallica at like the reunion show. And he was playing it like a little faster than the album and they're all trying to keep up. And that just was uh -huh. so cool to watch, <laughs> watch him really going for it because I haven't watched um, um Dave Mustaine really killed it on guitar since they played Lamours at that possessed <laughs> um, show with Megadeth. So it was <laughs> it was it was really nice to see him like you know get a little bit of that old school fuel going on from the old days, you know, and just firing it up and just showing the guys in Metallica like you know you got to get with it, you know, like <laughs> it was just funny to watch them all struggle. But um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just an asshole, I guess. But I thought it was cool. <laughs> well, you were yeah, honest. yeah, yeah. I guess so. And um, yeah, most people don't want to say the truth, you know. But um, with um, I do think also on Kill 'Em All, yeah, the bass solo, anesthesia, pulling teeth is like it's crazy, but it's like a great song. <laughs> And it's just, it's basically a bass solo with a drum beat going on to it. And it really is a great song. Um, 
every time every time i listen to it i'm just like i'm like oh this is really fucking cool like i'm into it you usually hear like the bass solo and once you get like a couple listens to it you're like okay it's fine whatever so dude's playing this but it's actually really a good uh segue into whiplash i mean whiplash is a good song but it might even be better than whiplash itself the the solo um so yeah um did i pick songs yeah i picked songs and yeah. um yeah and i bashed all the most important people in the thrash yeah. scene and yeah i did my job though uh, yeah. yes you did i don't expect well any calls from metallica to open up or megadeth you may or, not know yeah well they <laughs> might not they probably don't watch my little channel anyhow you might be safe yeah but um yeah but that's that so, well, anyhow yeah. so uh john mcatee <laughs> anyhow I, I just threw my career out the window <laughs> uh, we can always, you're good uh, buddy you're good you're we can good. also <laughs> always retape if you need me to <laughs> yeah we'll, think, we'll fix that in editing right um, i know i just got a call those guys wanted to no. come play the chainsaw uh, festival <laughs> but, I, but to be to be um to be honest really um we're really all adding megadeth into it they're all super important bands in the mm -hmm. metal history and stuff it just for me there's a special era of, you know, the early days when they really had an impact to it. For and sure. it's like, and th to be honest, it's like every time I hear those bands now, I just, I just wish they had the impact that I had when I was a young kid listening to those for the first time. And I just can't, I can't, it's almost, look at it like as a crack hit, you know? So you take the first crack hit and it's great, you know? And you're you're trying to get cracked the whole time to get that hit just as good, but it never gets to the same place as that first hit. Yeah, Levin knows what I'm talking about. Uh -oh. <laughs> are, you saying, are you saying that Levin's a crack -in? Wait, he's, there, he's sitting there like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no but yeah. seriously it's like one of those things you, you can never recreate that that mm. feeling of hearing that for the first time because it wasn't just hearing those songs like somebody who hears those songs now that's younger like 20 years younger than me is never gonna understand yeah. the impact it was before any of this stuff exists i mean yes. none of the just think of any of the thrash bands that you think is you know or you think or were there forever were not there at that time you know exactly. not making the impact there was other bands there was venom there was motorhead stuff like that exciter but th there wasn't anything like those like metallica and slayer at that time mm -hmm. and those things when it came out it was just like a whole new level of of like something was it was a change like this is like beyond what what was already there um what you thought was the sickest you know and um yeah so that, that's good. my rent yeah, good you're absolutely right john absolutely right and, oh, thank you Ed. and john mcatee breaks the tie and puts metallica into the lead it kills me to do that too three to two yeah <laughs> I, mean, I mean um what's her name um uh robin will be proud of me though Robin, Robin, <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah. Robin's uh, gonna. She's the one that's gonna tell the band. <laughs> yes, <laughs> she's watching. She's on the. She's on the road with obituary or, or somebody tonight, right? Is she on the road with Exodus? Because Exodus is playing around here right now. I'm on the road with she might be busy. I don't know, anyhow, I, 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 real, real quickly, Exodus bonded by blood. I was just listening to that the other day, mm. and that's really like. That's one of the best thrash metal albums. Oh yeah, absolutely. Ever, no I, I don't even. Sure. That that's that's probably, that's probably comparable to both the first Slayer and the first Metallica. I think the, that's right up there with them. I mean, well, if, I guess we should have threw it into a three way dance, but we didn't. <laughs> well, thing, is, but it was a couple years later. Cool. I think. That was yeah. that should have come out in '83. That got pushed back because yeah, of the yeah. Yep. Yep. yeah. We just. He released in 83 early 84 and uh yeah. it got pushed back to 85 unfortunately which set them back otherwise that would have been a phenomenal release i mean just I just think about anything. just think about the impact that would have made mm -hmm. and it might have even diluted a little bit of metallica's momentum because that i mean that album's amazing uh, is, bonded by is. blood i mean really i mean that 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 That's holds impressive. every time you listen to it, it holds up as good as the first time you heard it. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it does. Ah. It's a great album. Yeah, it's All really right. one of the classics.
So, so Steve, I guess cool, it, since Steve, you started talking, so it's your turn. Sorry, I didn't. Did well, I, I mean, something? how do you follow that up? That was great, John. Thank you so much, man. That was uh, oh, that thanks. was great. That was good stuff right there, man. <laughs> no, no, hold, no holding back. Yeah, no, just, absolutely. But I mean, no it, it's you know, it's the truth. And I mean, I guess uh, I'll start with Metallica since they came first, and uh, you know, I had a unique relationship with them because I had had the No Life Till Leather demo for quite some time by the time the mall came out, and I had a relationship with the Zazula family as far as being a customer and everything at that point. And going down to the original Rock and Roll Heaven in uh, New Jersey at that time. And um, so for me, I mean, it sounds kind of snobbish. And I always laugh at myself and people laugh at me as well. So, you know, I'm not going to take anything away from that. But I always love No Life to Leather because Dave Mustaine is like a bull in a china shop. His lead are blistering, they're angry, they're pissed off. And I mean, even trying to re recreate them, it's like, I don't know. I mean, you have to get pretty high or real drunk or real pissed off at something. I don't even know. His leads are just menacing on that demo. And then Kirk Hammett comes out on Kill Em All and his leads are very controlled, more thought out, definitely more musical, I would say. But, you know, if I had to choose one or the other, I'm going to go with the heavier and the angrier Mustaine. You know, so I always like No Life to Leather more than Kill em All. Now, that being said, I recently just watched the documentary Murder in the Front Row. And the funny thing about that oh. doc, if you ever check it out, of course. It's, uh, it's it's based on it's it's all based on the Bay Area. So one thing that John was bringing up, and this is absolutely true, is at that point, Exodus was leading the scene. They were ahead yeah. of they were ahead of Metallica. Metallica came up to San Francisco to be with Cliff, because Cliff was playing in a band called Trauma. And uh, I remember having the Trauma demo back in the day. And it wasn't real heavy. It was more along, uh, I'd say it was more like a uh, new wave of British heavy metal, like that kind of stuff, and uh, more rock and rolly. But he was a tremendous bass player. So think about the importance of this. Metallica wanted him to join the band. And he said, I'll join the band, but only if you guys move your whole unit up to San Francisco from LA and they did. And you know, I mean, they they should have and it was the right move. So when I go back and listen to Kill Em All, it has a little bit more meaning after watching that documentary and remembering that they had Cliff and that was the big difference between the No Life to Leather demo and Kill Em All. And I still like the leads better. And uh, I think Kirk Hammett did an admirable job of copying them, but there's no way he's like the bull in the China shop that I described on the demo. But that album does have Cliff, and Cliff was a groundbreaking musician, and I mean, he was just phenomenal. So for Kill Em All, my favorite songs are going to be Whiplash and No Remorse, hands down. I mean, the other songs, I actually like the versions better on the demo, but those two songs are just no nonsense, the end of No Remorse, it's just crazy, you know? I mean, that's so thrashing, and I mean, come on, Whiplash, I mean, that's one of the most classic, like, you know, kicks your ass, kicks your face. I mean, bam, bam, bam. It just pounds you at the beginning. Doom, digga, 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 digga. Drums are phenomenal. And uh, Kirk's lead is just, oh, it just smokes on that. I'm going to be honest. That is the one song that if you go back and listen to the first Metallica demo with uh, Whiplash and No Remorse on it, I think that uh, Kirk Hammett's lead on Kill Em All was actually better than uh, Mustaine's original lead on Whiplash. So, you know, there is something to be said for that. Now, flipping over to Show No Mercy, which came out a little bit later, um, you know, I had actually heard Slayer on the uh, Metal Mask or 3 with the track that was on there. So I had kind of an idea what they were about. That was a little bit more like Judas Priest inspired, I would say. And my buddy Gary D said, hey, there's this band Slayer coming out of uh california if you ever see the album pick it out they're supposed to be so evil they're supposed to be so fast and great so um you know we were in the old orange plaza which is middletown's yeah that before uh your store steve and uh yep. that or you know i mean when Back you're a kid for that age, you could, don't have the money to go down to rock and roll heaven which is like a two and a half hour drive yeah every weeks you know so you know, sometimes you go to the local record store and you go in the import record section. So there it was, Slayer, Show No Mercy. 
And I see that goat on the front, and I'm like, oh, this is me. Because I was always drawn to that. Even in the New Wave British Heavy Metal, it was always like Angel Witch, Witch Vine, Desolation Angels. It was always the more evil-looking stuff. Yeah. That's what I was drawn to. So when I saw that goat, and then you flip it over, and you have side six and side six, six. And the song titles and they had the makeup on and it looks so evil. And I know that Exodus actually told them like, guys, take off that makeup. Yeah, and, they did in that movie. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, is is uh, it's been told many times, like by the second show, they had taken that makeup off. But um, that album is no joke, man. So my favorite songs from that, I would have to say, is uh, Evil Has No Boundaries. Um, my band used to play Antichrist. My band played Die by the Sword. Black Magic is another favorite. Um the Final Command, uh, that album, you have to remember that Dave Lombardo had a single bass kit. I mean, he didn't have double bass on that. And if you listen to it, he's playing the single bass. He's hitting that kick drum so fast. Da -da 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 -da. It almost sounds like double bass. And uh, aside from that, one thing that was always memorable about that album, and uh, even though I prefer Hella Waits, I mean, the atmosphere and the reverb on that album, it's just such a great album. And uh, I always lump the uh, Haunting the Chapel EP in with that one, too, because it was really right along the same lines of the longer songs and uh, the more epic songwriting. But uh, when Show No Mercy came out, Maximum Rock and Roll, which was largely a punk magazine, and they were not into metal bands at all. And they used to slam metal bands. I mean, really hard. But, you know, they started to like some of the crossover stuff. But one thing I always remember is they loved that first Slayer album because of Final Command. Because that song was so fast. I mean, that was literally a punk song. And that really showed that Slayer not only had that Judas Priest influence that Kerry King had, but Jeff Hanneman had that very punk influence. And that was like his songwriting there. And uh, that's another one of my favorite songs. And uh, I am not going to make Satan disappointed. Satanic wear mock, baby. All the way. <laughs> I'm going with Slayer. Slayer will always be better than Metallica in my uh eyes and i mean i always laugh because my good friend randy uh, i think i was just talking to her about this the other night is i still remember having a conversation with her parents mm -hmm. and them going oh no no metallica's so much better and uh, i'd be like no slayer slayer you know <laughs> and the time they were so happy they came back from a slayer show and they were backstage and they had heard dave lombardo going oh man i was playing so fast tonight i think i was playing faster than you guys you know and he was talking to the rest of the band and I was like, yeah, that's great. And they were like, well, that's no way to conduct the band, but you're not going to get through this concrete skull. Slayer all the way, 100%. So all I will right. not make Satan weep. John, Satan's very disappointed in you, man. I know. Uh -oh. I, know. <laughs> I know. I mean, come on, dude. The goat, you are the goat. You know, you're, and not, I mean, you're not you're not wrong, but I have to be honest. That's all. Okay. No doubt. But and not for nothing, though, but like bands like you, when you guys first came out, it was the same thing as when like Slayer and those bands came out. We were getting turned on to something that was new and exciting mm -hmm. and heavy, man. So, yeah. oh, I mean, you do, you, you definitely get a little bit of that legend status with that for sure, man. You know, for sure. that's nice of you to say. Um, true. What I wanted to say was uh, what I was, well, you, you were saying about Kurt Hammond. I think Kurt Hammond is a really good guitar player. I'm Me not too. a fan of all his work. I mean, just because I, but I just don't like some of the stuff Metallica's done. But I think he's a great guitar player. And I think, even though you're right, I think uh, Dave Mustaine was more pissed off on the No Life to Leather demo. The, the solo, I still love the solo work on the Kill Em All. I think, I mean, I'm so used to it because that's what I heard. I knew that version first and then went back to hear the demo. And mm -hmm. then the demo never sounded quite good enough where i played it as much as i because it's basically the, the same album the whole the demo right i think it is all the same songs so i just end up listening to kill them all but i i think carrot hammett's guitar solo work is amazing on uh kill them all i mean i think he's great on really on the first really uh, well on all the albums he's really great but on uh, the the attack i just love the just the shredding of the guitar work. It's just like when the guitar comes in, he's just going for it all the time. It seems like it's no holding back. And as a young aspiring guitar player, that was really influential to hear that attack, you know? I mean, right. Slayer was the same way, but Slayer was more just like these evil sounds like Satan's winds, you know, <laughs> or whatever on those solos, which is also great too, you know? Right. I mean, as far as my playing go, I would say Metallica definitely had more influence in the show that Ralph was talking about back in um 84, which was at JB's Rock 3, or maybe it was even 83. I, I think guess it was, it was 83. 
Yeah, because uh, Cyrus' right. first show on the East Coast was a Halloween night um, Rio Theater in 84, and I was at that one. And Cyrus, uh, Cyrus, uh, I saw Kirk Hammett. I always thought it was his first show, but it was actually his second show, uh, both nights when Metallica warmed up for Venom. Um, the show that Ralph was talking about was at JB's Rock 3, a small uh, bar that we had that had some really classic, legendary shows. So you might not be able to see me there because I actually, when I was on the stage, if you look, I was kneeling, or was, or was one, or kneeling on one knee, standing on the other foot right in front of Kirk Hammett. And I'm not going to lie, man. I actually watched Kirk Hammett's fingers move. And when I went home that night, I picked up my guitar and I played for like four or five hours. Mm -hmm. He literally gave me a guitar lesson that night. And it wow. really changed the way that I played guitar. I learned how to play hammer on triplets and stuff that night from watching him play. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I was so close that I really got like a hands-on lesson and that was amazing. And, yeah. uh, you know, I used to watch Carrie and, and Jeff all the time too. And I play way more like them because I'm so addicted to my trem arm. Like all my other guitars, all my, my stop tails are gone. You know, I have nothing but trems, but, uh, you know, not for nothing. Kirk Hammett really taught me a lot about playing. Cool. I have one, one really quick thing before we move on that I just yeah. thought about too. Is... Dan, Danny's got to go play hockey, so we got to get to him real quick. <laughs> okay, one, yeah. one, go one, go one, go. Five. Each band, each band, like what was I gonna say? When I seen each band the first time live and just any time live, Slayer destroyed it every time Absolutely. they played live back then. It was like. Mm -hmm. It hit like a ton of bricks. I would say Metallica Live sometimes it wasn't bad at all, but nothing hit like I Slayer. I mean, I see I didn't see Slayer until Rain and Blood, so it was a little bit later than some of you on that. But when I seen a play at, the, I was thinking it was a Capitol Theater. Yeah, it was, was just like me, yeah. it was like yeah. holy crap! Like it was yeah. so it just boom i mean when i hear my i see metallic at the capitol theater too and i think the beacon and a couple and then at the, the meadowlands and stuff and they sounded good but it always it was always a more it didn't have that fullness that slayer just hit and it was just like bam yeah. you know metallica it was good but it was just like it was it sounded good and the songs were good but it didn't have that same you know like once i seen slayer live it was all over i was like oh, this, is, this is like the best thing i ever seen you know or something like that. So anyway, yeah, they were they were unfuckable with live back then. I mean, they were just nasty dudes. Unfuckable. I mean, just, you know, they were just too much. Man. And I yes. didn't really see any band that excited me that much live until years later when I saw Morbid Angel when they very first came around and like when yeah. Trey would like bite his arm and make his yeah, arm bleed. They were, like, they were, they yeah, were there's, they there's something very special about that that youth and aggression and uh, like wanting to prove yourself vibe. And I mean, Slayer yeah. definitely had that back no, then. I mean, I'm not saying Metallica didn't. I just think the sound of Slayer just somehow hit me better live than Metallica, mm -hmm. even though Metallica was still great. We're talking about two bands at their the pinnacle, of their career really, mm -hmm. you know, definitely. Cool. Well, we tied it up. It's three to three going into, <laughs> we're heading up into the Northwest territories of Canada. To see Sasquatch Denny Barth. What who are you gonna break the tie or are you gonna I guess oh, you're gonna, well I don't have to. a choice. I will break the tie. <laughs> I will, I will, you will. <laughs> I'm gonna get a pass from Steven and score a goal in overtime. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. I'll set you up all night long, bro. But so much to say about those two records, like honestly, like uh like because you know, I always say that uh Venom Welcome to Hell um you know changed my life um but definitely like you could feel that movement like the windows two albums i think metallica came in like august came out in august kill them all and then slayer in december and and yeah. between those two albums i was 17 years old right but between those two albums it seems like it was a longer span than only like four months seems like when i think about it, it it's it's different so like those two albums is like having sex with twins. It's the same, <laughs> it's 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 the same but different, right? <laughs> so that's um, the way to put it. You know, the only thing I'm gonna say is uh so uh aggression before we were called aggression, um we were called asylum. <laughs> and and our first show was in nineteen eighty four and we opened for Anvil. And and our set, 
our set had five songs from Kill 'Em All and eight songs from Show No Mercy. <laughs> <laughs> and one one original song, we, we played Metal Slaughter as the last song. And I was the singer at that show. Like, so, um, so, but now that I think about it, how did we learn all those songs between like August, like, you know, 83, <laughs> December, and then play them all. But that's all we did, right? That's, that's, that's all we did. Like, and um, I, I remember uh, buying Kill 'em All. Um, I, I bought the Mega Force version. Um, the, the, we had two options. We had the Mega Force that was a bit more uh, expensive, or the Banzai Record, the Canadian version that was cheaper, but the sound quality was not the same. There was always a little variety, like. I don't know what it was, but it was not the same. So I bought the Mega Force, and of course I brought it home, and and you know uh, fell in love with Hit the Lights, uh, fell in love with like Whiplash and and Phantom Lord. Um, so we used to play Hit the Lights. We used to start our show with Hit the Lights. We used to play uh, Motor Breath. We used to play Whiplash, and we played also Phantom Lord and Seek and Destroy. So that was the song we were playing from Kill 'Em All. Um, and I remember, like, of course, like, um, you know, like, we were already, like, in, with, like, heavy into, like, Motorhead and Exciter and all the bands, like, like John mentioned, right? But, like, it's it was definitely, like, uh, something was happening. And all these bands always talk about, like, their, like, uh, love for punk, uh, you know, like, Dead Kennedys and Misfits and all that stuff. But I, I was not hearing it yet. Aside, like, the drum beat that was faster... I felt like both band was just as much influenced by like Priest and Maiden than they were by like, you know, like Dead Kennedys and Misfits and, and all those bands. But uh so say so on the Metallica side, um, I will still remember like I bought this album and like like you guys said, you know, you sh you get your friends over, they want to listen to Led Zeppelin, like in my time of dying, you're like fuck that shit listen to like <laughs> listen to fucking metal militia this is this is the new <laughs> law like you know you know yes. go smoke your fucking weed and stay out there right so we 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 started to like the band and then we thought there was only like again five six of us into that band and then they we saw that they were coming with wasp and armor saint like the following year and when we went to the show we like we were surrounded by about like a thousand people singing every lyrics of seek and destroy is singing like every lyrics of like all those songs and you know there was something happening with that band you know like something was was gonna was gonna they, you know that you felt it that they were bigger but slayer on the other end mm -hmm. they, they like it was a scary experience like so they played in Montreal. Uh, they played the, it was like the Show No Mercy Haunting the Chapel tour. And uh, Voivod was opening uh, oh, wow. for them. Wow. Uh, so Voivod was played like War and Pain pretty much. And then after that, it was Slayer who drove from like Edmonton, Canada to Montreal in the Camaro. Wow. Oh. With like <laughs> with Gene Oglin and John Araya and all those guys in the band, like, and I was told Lombardo drove most of it. And so they had a Camaro with a freaking you all in the back. There were six guys in the Camaro. You're cr that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's like a 35-hour hour drive. And then Lombardo drove 20 of those hours and did this drum solo in the encore. They played Show No Mercy and he started a drum solo before they, they used to play Show No Mercy. Yeah. Um, so like... Um, and I, I I have to always say that story because so the other guy the other guitar player in aggression burn was more like a like a Queen's uh merciful fate kind of guy like he liked like melodies he was more like sensitive right <laughs> so, so 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 I I I bring him to the Slayer show and he's like wow this is this is just noise these guys are horrible <laughs> like. This is the worst thing I ever seen in my life. How can these guys make a career out of this? And then, like five minutes later, how much are the t-shirts? <laughs> <laughs> so, and he bought a t-shirt that night. But yeah, like, um, 
you know, like in, in Slayer, um, I, I think because I like Venom so much, I think I could relate better with Slayer. I like that scary, uh, and I like the like like the Antichrist and Tormentor and like Die by the Sword. People don't talk about that song enough, but it was it's a very well constructed song that you can almost hear the roots of like death metal into these the, the type of riffing, especially during the choruses, the chorus and stuff. So we used to we used to play like aside those five like Kellermo song we used to play like Evil Has No Boundaries Antichrist Final Command Fight Till Death Show No Mercy Black Magic Black Magic was the first song of course we we learned and we also played uh, Tormentor and we played Show No Mercy wow. um, and that was like uh, 1984 that's we used to like jam twelve hour days. And just play those songs over and then start writing our own material. But when we played with like, Anvil, it was an outside concert in Montreal. I, it was like, I have like probably like four or 5,000 people. It was wow. like our first show, like our, we played little shows like in friends' backyard and garage and shit like that. Nobody wanted to like us to play anywhere. <laughs> so we opened for Anvil and, uh, <laughs> um, you know, we had those like, like uh like Ralph was saying, we had we we took like hockey pads, uh like hockey shin pads and cut the knee portion and put like six inches like freaking nail through it and we had all that shit. The guys from Enville were like, What the fuck is going on? Like <laughs> these guys are gonna kill us. And like Dave Allison from Enville is backstage with his little Adidas short and a chihuahua reading a book, and we're just like, you know, like what is this? Like so anyway, uh, yeah. So like, it's 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 definitely like, um, uh, you know, like to me, uh, I, I'm gonna vote Slayer, Show No Mercy, um, uh, and and just for the fact that I think it musically had a bigger influence on me, um, even though like you know, no disrespect to Kill 'Em All, like I. I, I same as you guys, Metal Militia is one of the best like trash songs out there, and and Phantom Lord. I I love the transition from the slow part, the like melodic, um, you know, and I and I you know like of course like when like Ride the Lightning came, it's like I don't know if you guys read like the Martin Popov books, the uh, Collector's Guide of Heavy Metal, but he said like it took like thirty seconds of listening to that song to understand that we had a new wave of metal when like when fight fire with fire started but i felt i felt like uh like right the uh kill them all with like phantom lord they were they were getting there uh and that riff has a little bit more punk to it as well so i'm gonna go with show no mercy as my vote uh because mm -hmm. we played eight songs from that album and that's like <laughs> kind of ridiculous but <laughs> Sounds it's like, like a party. It's <laughs> like having sex with twins. You have to take care of everybody, right? So, <laughs> right on. Cool, cool. Yeah, there's no losers, really, you know? No. <laughs> no. Well, no. we've got Slayer ahead, four to three, and it's my turn. Is it going to be uh, a tie? Then what do we do? We got to get the Cavaloosies to finally show up. Ralph, they didn't make it. Let's get, let's get Robin to chime in. Oh, you know who she's voting no. for. <laughs> <laughs> Not on this. Text, text her. So, uh, I, rem I guess my turn. Yeah. So I remember buying the Metallica Kill Em All record at Record City in Poughkeepsie, uh, New York. It's uh, another place that we I used to go all the time before my yeah. store was open. We had Record World, what Steve was talking about in our local mall, which was a chain. But Record City was like the cool place to go because it was like a head shop, but it was a record shop. They had a lot of import stuff. They, I remember buying patches there. And of course, we went up there a lot for shows at the Civic Center and whatnot, too. Mm -hmm. So whenever we went up there for a show to Poughkeepsie, we'd hit that record store first and they had all, all the import stuff. So I remember buying it, of course, just by the cover. And then, you know, you couldn't listen to it because of the record. You'd wait till you get home and then going, oh my God, like, what the hell is this? And it was like, the song that stood out for me in the beginning was Motor Breath. It was like, this song is just brutal and it's fast as hell. And other than you know, other than Motorhead, it was that the fastest thing I've ever heard. And uh, I started calling my friends. I was really amazed by the album. And then I caught the tour at the State Theater in Port Jervis, which is a yeah. 
town about 10, 15 miles to the west by the by the New Jersey PA border and got to see them there. And then, of course, the show in Middletown, which was just a, I don't know how much later that was, maybe a couple weeks later, was it, Steve? Uh, they were playing stuff off Ride the Lightning. So it was a little bit later than was that. It? So the yeah. State Theater one was before the first show. Yes. Yeah. And then Middletown was a little bit later. Okay. It's a little bit later. It might have been like the next year, but it was. Like was it probably, that long? I was thinking. I, I, I thought think it was only it was like, like a couple. Uh, uh, yeah. My memory's a little hazy, but that's why we got a couple people here. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, of course, that we already talked that 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 set was immortalized and being in the, the box set, the, the, the Kill 'Em All box set was in there. And the Slayer album, I'm a little bit like a lot of the rest of you. I did not listen to that right away. I probably didn't hear that until sometime in that next year because I was a young kid. I didn't have this story yet. I was working on like flea markets and whatever. I didn't have much money. So, uh, you know, I'd pick up a couple of records. I I was way into Metallica more than I was a Slayer in the beginning. But revisiting both of these albums in the last week or two, it's a tough one, though, because Metallica's record, I consider their, has some of their, I consider their strongest songs. I love Hit the Lights. I mean, Whiplash, Phantom Lord, Metal Militia, and of course, The Four Horsemen. And it is my favorite Metallica record. Uh, and, I, you know, it's just such iconic songs that, uh, you know, like I said, they're, they're still being played, whether they're played the way they were back then, which obviously not, but they're still being played in somehow football stadiums here in the United States. And that's still... Kind of well, just that Hetfield's voice is different now. Oh, he, it's a lot different. He's, uh, his balls dropped finally, I guess, he, from the early days. <laughs> yeah, something's happened. But uh, so I'm giving the nod to Slayer on this one, start to finish. It's a total rager, and it's my that's pretty much my favorite Slayer record. I don't know. I, I really, I mean, I guess I could flip a coin and like Hell Awaits better, and I don't know, their whole career. To me, I still like the later Slayer stuff, which some of you guys might not have. But to me, Slayer was always more... I mean, if you asked me this in 1985, I would have definitely picked Metallica. But now, I'm definitely with the Slayer uh, all the way. And uh, I just listened to the Slayer release more. I still pick that album up, and I still listen to it a lot. I don't really listen to the Kill 'Em All as much. I I revisit a lot. I still play that album. I have that on rotation, of course, in my store. The the Metallica stuff, but uh, Metallica lost me in the '90s, and it it was hard to go back because they were my favorite until they put out, you know, and started cutting their hair and acting like you two or Nickelback or whatever. And I'll get in trouble <laughs> because I have a store, and people are gonna come in and go. Oh my God! You and this Metallica, let's get over it. No, I'm not going to the Giant Stadium this guy this year. I don't <laughs> care if Pantera's playing or not. I'll go see Pantera in a lawn seat in Wilkes Bear for forty bucks instead of spending. I know people that were spending three thousand dollars to go see Metallica two <laughs> nights because they made you go twice and you got to go see Five Finger Death Punch and whatever it's else a terrible is on that. Bill. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I wouldn't mind checking out Phil and Pantera and Zach just for a show, but I'll I'll go see him on a lawn somewhere. So anyhow, my vote is for Slayer. So Slayer is winning this five to three. But please, in the comments, everybody that's watching, please uh, give your opinion to this uh, and see what's going on. I'm a little surprised that Slayer won this uh, contest. I bet if it was on Hudson Valley Squares on Monday nights on Monday night show, a show with me and Ralph do every week. I think it might have swung the other way because the people on that show are a little more commercial than we are. No, they're more sensitive. Yeah, yeah. More sensitive or commercial <laughs> sensitive or whatever you want to say. Don't get us in trouble. Hey, yeah. The Slayer is your winner, and it was well represented. It was a tight battle, and uh, it was like an over. Uh, what was it called? Danny was calling it an overtime. So we won. We won an overtime. It was tied. So. But uh, next week, we're going to come back. We're doing another 1983 album war. This one is going to pit Black Sabbath, Born Again versus Dio, Holy Diver versus Ozzy Osbourne, Bark at the Moon. So uh, oh. that one will be next week. And we're going to we're going to take care of the Ozzy Black Sabbath Dio connection. We're going to have Chris Allo with us from uh, Hudson Valley Square, Sea of Tranquility. 
And hopefully everybody on this panel can come back and do that with us next week. And please uh, hit like, subscribe, all that crap on here. And, uh, oh, if you're in the Middletown area, we got some free shows going on this week. Uh, we've got Necroptic Engorgement with Servant of Sol Sorrow, Brutality, Skullovich, Scented, uh, what's it, Burn the Ships. All these, all these bands are playing for free here in Middletown. So if you're yes, around the area, come on out and just come to the show. Go bowling. It's in a bowling alley. You can go play pinball. We got pinball. We got great bar, craft beer, everything there. And uh, the fall week is Count Ralph's birthday. We've got Jotunheim from New York City. It's a black metal outfit. We've yes. got Show No Mercy, the Slayer tribute coming in, which is going to be a great night to just hang out. And we've got the debut of Reaper. In the bar at there that night, along with Crucial Pain, uh, that's an, a, going to be a great night of metal in Middletown, New York. So uh, please come out and come say hello to us if you're in the area. Anybody else want to wrap anything up? Anybody want to add anything to the end of the show tonight? Yeah, Memorium is coming out with a new album on Friday called Rise to Power. Oh, yeah? Yeah. In Memorium. Of okay. Of I guess our mutual friend of me and John McEntee called Mr. Carl Willits. Okay. What's that? Carl Willits. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Memor Memorium, his new project. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the fifth album, Rise to Power, comes out on Friday on Reaper Entertainment. Of course. Nice. Cool. And of course, John McAtee has his festival coming up. You're watching the pro. You're watching this episode. Check it out, John. Tell us about it. What's coming up? Early May, yeah. right? <clears throat> yeah, early May. It's the first weekend of May. We're doing the Carolina Chainsaw Massacre. Um, yeah, a lot of good bands. We have uh, Possessed, um, Exciter, um, Incantation. I have to play that bill. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, you gonna play that? Cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, let me look at it. I'm like all nervous now talking about it. <laughs> look at the flyer. Well, here's a flyer right here for it. You can see. There we go. And this is in North yeah, Carolina. False prophet. Yep. Gruesome. You... So Robin will be there. Aggression. Uh, you know, Denny there. Hell yeah. And Robin yes. Robin will vote for Metallica and, and closing <laughs> us up a few there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. And we're, gonna, we're also going to have some horror guests there too. We have the evil dead girls from the first evil dead and um, oh. Caroline Williams <laughs> and um, we're working on a few other ones for it. So definitely be a, definitely be a killer um, metal and horror party for sure. We're going to make it as sick as possible for everybody. Do you, have a web, do, you have a, do you have a website so people can go check it out get tickets and all that good stuff? So. Yeah, you can go to carolinachainsawmasker.com. We have a, a crappy version of website up up now, but in a couple of days, hopefully a week, we'll have the this new and improved uh, website. But check it out now and buy tickets right away. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. Don't all even right. wait for the show to end. Just automatically go to, go to that site and buy some tickets. Mm -hmm. Cool. Ed, anything going on in New York City? You're still. Uh... Uh, I've basically just confirmed my first show of the year. I can't talk about it yet. But okay. Really oh, time. nice. Yeah. On a snap. Yep. <laughs> All right. So for Ed Farsley, Tony Dio, Obi, Rundum, uh, Count Ralphus, John McAtee, Steve Levin, and Danny Varth, and myself, please, thanks for spending uh, spending your evening, or afternoon, morning, whatever it is with us. And uh, we'll see you here next week for some more stuff on the Rock Fantasy YouTube channel. Boom. Yeah.